Kelly Thompson and Sarah Pacelli put Ben Riley through his paces as Ben meets with the Beyond Corps Hero Development CEO, who wants to know if the hero is a team player, or would he rather end up an obscure hero like Peter Parker? Kelly Thompson tags into the book for some issues and uses her first issue to help reaffirm Ben Riley's dedication to the Beyond Corporation and explore his relationship with the various women that he works with. I like Thompson exploring the idea that Ben is almost being forced into this situation with thinly veiled threats of him being thrown back into obscurity and no one remembering who he is, Janie's safety also being kind of used against him since she's being cooped up in the tower, or that he would be letting down the world if he passes on a chance to work with the amazing Beyond Corporation. It's such an interesting way to take the character and I like that she explored it through this new character Maxine Danger, the person behind the hero development of this new Spider-Man. I like her character being this sort of tough as nails boss who doesn't deal with any of his shit or anything. It's quite an interesting foil for Ben. Ben also continues showcasing how mature he can be, wanting to talk things out with Janine and air all her problems so he can help sort them out. Again, if you compare it to Peter, he kind of shuts people out and often runs away from his problems. So I enjoy that dichotomy between these two people and that the writers tackling that head on. Sarah Pacelli pitches in as artist and the book's art continues to be amazing. I love how emotive Sarah makes her faces on the characters and being that this was a very dialogue and character drama heavy issue that was quite important and we got a little bit of action here and there at the beginning and the end of the book and that was quite cool as well. Particularly the last page just bathed in red with Morbius and Spider-Man there which was quite cool. The Amazing Spider-Man issue 77 continued Ben Riley's really interesting new status quo change, revealing some more of the inner workings of the Beyond Corp as well as a really great cliffhanger ending. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. The Amazing Spider-Man issue 77 finds Ben training with Misty and Colleen, feeling that he's being punished as they have almost killed him many times. The women compare him to one of those jumping spiders but Colleen knows he's more annoying than them. As Ben webs up Misty's gun, he tries to apologise as Marcus and Maxine Danger, the head of Hero Development, watch the training. Marcus knows he's distracted since the women are giving him a run for his money, but Maxine knows that that's the idea, isn't it? She tells him to shut down the training as she goes to see them, wanting to see Ben before he heads to his next appointment while Misty and Colleen head off to get some new tech. Colleen knows that tomorrow Ben won't escape as the hero leaves with Maxine who tells him his appointment with Kafka can wait since she wants to just cut to the chase and tell him that they have invested a lot into him but they also believe in what he is and what he can be and he has a rare opportunity to actually make a difference in the world. She hopes he understands this and doesn't take it lightly and Ben defends himself, stammering to find the words but Maxine knows what he means but she also can't have him taking off the suit and turning off his comms whenever he wants to. Ben tries to explain but Maxine is not interested, warning him that she has no time for excuses as she's heard it all before. She doesn't want to give him a hard time since she's just trying to make sure that he really is the right person for this job, since to her he is the only one for it. She asks him to make a choice, asking if he wants to be Spider-Man or someone who was known as almost being Spider-Man. Ben chooses to be Spider-Man and Maxine is glad, leaving him to his therapy. Ben heads to see Kafka, talking with her about their boss Maxine and how intimidating she can be. Ben wants to move on, talking to Kafka about an old friend and how they had similar relationships with their father figures, finding them to be almost like an anchor to the boat, but he finds that quite dumb. Kafka tells him to continue with it, so Ben says without them as an anchor, he would have drifted off, remembering one of Peter's copied memories in his mind of him fixing a step out the front of their home that his aunt kept tripping on, and he kept putting it off all summer, and he felt awful about it. As he continues the story, Ben finds himself getting a weird sense of deja vu, but Ashley says that that's not too strange since he's had a lot of changes all happening at once in his life. She tells Ben that she'll talk with the Beyond Corp to scale back his commitments slightly for at least a day so Ben can have some time to himself and Ben is happy, especially since he'll get an uninterrupted date night with Janine. At the hospital, May and MJ watch over the unconscious Peter, with May refusing to leave since the last time she did that, Peter went into the coma. She hopes that MJ could make some calls to people she knows in Hollywood or even to Tony Stark for help, but MJ had already tried, calling up Doctor Strange, but he wasn't available since he might actually be in another dimensional plane. Tony was also out of the picture as he's dealing with something big. 
May refuses to let this sit, wanting to do something, but MJ tells her not to do anything crazy since Peter would be mad at her if she let May get hurt. May tells her not to worry since she'd rather deal with an angry Peter over a comatose Peter as outside, Black Cat watches the family comfort the comatose Peter. Ben returns home to Janine, who can't get over his therapist being named Kafka. She jokes about how she expects him to come home one day being half cockroach and half spider with no man left, something she's kind of happy about. Soon they talk about one of their problems, with how Janine feels that she is being trapped in a cage. She knows it's a nice cage, but sometimes it's a lot, being that there's security at every doorway telling her she can't leave. Ben knows that what he does is dangerous and Beyond is offering her protection, but he wants her to voice her feelings. Before she can, however, his communicator beeps, forcing Ben to leave. Janine knows that this was part of their deal as Ben heads to a teleportation portal, telling her he loves her as he is teleported across town, where he finds Michael Morbius has been murdering some scientists. The vampire viciously attacks but Spider-Man dodges, wanting to know what happened here. Morbius continues his attack as Spider-Man webs him up, slamming him against the floor as the vampire demands the hero's blood. As Spider-Man tends to the scientists, hoping that they are still alive, Morbius frees himself from the web, attacking the hero and hitting him in the face, dazing him for a second as he bites into the hero's neck, hoping he can forgive him. 